Hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. So the sister came up and asked a question. Y'all may have a similar question. She said, well, why are there so many religions and denominations out here today? All right, so we're going to answer that out of the Bible. Read. Verse 3. I mean, the book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So thy people is who? The Israelites. And when it says they, it's talking about God's enemies, and it's going to tell you exactly who these people are. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Keep going. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us cut them off from being a nation. So I want to answer it for you real simply. The reason that there's so many uh, religions out here today is to keep you cut off from being a nation. That's right. To keep you cut off from knowing exactly who you are. There's no religion out there, not Christianity, not Islam, not 5 percenter, not, give me some more garbage out there, uh, not, not Egyptology, Mormon, not Mormonism, not Seventh-day Adventism, not Baptism, not Jehovah Witnessism. None of that foolishness is going to teach you who you are as a nation. None of those things are going to teach you that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, that you might be an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, that you might be an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. All these things are created to keep us in confusion. That's right. And that's where we live. We live in the land of confusion. Right. That's why the Bible calls America Babylon. Right. Does everybody understand that? All right. Yeah, yeah, you can record, bro. Any of y'all got any questions? All right, Sister Nelson, before you leave, I want to show you another, another scripture. So go to uh, Deuteronomy 4. So we've been talking a lot about, I'm sorry, uh, 22 and 5. We've been talking a lot about repentance. All right? And what God's want, what what does God want from us as His people, so that we can inherit everlasting life? Matter of fact, uh, go to Matthew 19 for me. Because somebody came up to Christ and asked Christ, "What do we have to do to get everlasting life? You want everlasting life? How about you?" Now we've been deceived to think that we're going to get everlasting life or access to everlasting life by going to church. Does the Bible teach you to go to church on Sunday, Sister Nelson? It doesn't. It doesn't. So if the Bible doesn't say go to church on Sunday, how can we trust anything that's coming out of church? The thing that got us there on Sunday didn't come out of the book. So how am I going to trust anything else that comes out of that place? You see that, Sister Nelson? And what was the name again? Greg. Greg. You understand what I'm saying? We all were raised going to church on Sunday, but then we... Let's go find Sunday service, you know, uh, 8 o'clock and, you know, praise and worship time and all of that and paying tiles. And the None of that is in the book. None of that is in the book. And do, you, do they collect tiles at your church? Sister, the Bible says the tithes are agricultural items. Tithing was never money, my sister. It was never money. Now that law comes out of the Old Testament. They don't teach you any of the other laws out of the Old Testament, do they? Well, please remember do they to teach you to, to, to celebrate the Passover? Wash your hands do they teach you that a woman shouldn't wear pants? Do they teach you that uh, do they teach you that a New Year is January or April? New Year is in January, but the Bible says that the New Year's is in April. That's right. I'm gonna give you a simple way to understand that, right? How's the weather right now? Weather's great, right? What color is the grass right now? Well, they teach Right, right. So that, that's green, right? We can all see that. What's going to start to happen to these trees? What's happening to this tree over here? Get that tree on the camera. What's it starting to do? They blooming. Now, when the tree is blooming, what is that? What's another word for bloom? New. There you go. It's blooming because it's new. Everything on the earth is new right now in the spring. How is it that a new year begins when everything's dead? That's right. The grass is brown. There's no leaves on the trees. There's no green anywhere. It's cold. Bears are hibernating. That's right. But the year is new? That's not in the Bible. The Bible tells us that the first month of the year is in a bib when things start to turn green. 
at the end of the cycle of seasons, it resets and the year is new. That's you see right. how easy that is to understand? That's right. The grass is new, the trees are new, the weather is new, the year is new. All together. That's easy to be understood, right? That's simple. Does the church teach you that it's okay to celebrate Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's go to the Bible. That's right. Because somebody else talked about Christmas. You celebrated Christmas, right? Yeah, growing up. Yeah, growing up, right? We all did. Tree up, right? Propped up with gifts up under it. It was right. It was. You don't, you don't do that no more. Okay. How, how do they decorate the tree? What what colors do they typically put on the tree? Silver and what else? Silver and gold, right? Now, Sister Nelson, if I showed you according to the Bible that putting up a tree, putting silver on it, putting gold on it is evil, and God said don't do it, what would you do December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one? I wouldn't put up a tree. All right, all right. Now, God's going to hold you accountable to your words, all right? All right, we're going to bring it out of the scriptures. Jeremiah chapter 10. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 1. Uh -huh. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you. Oh, just, just make sure it's real clear. It says, hear ye the word. Who spoke it? Which the Lord speaketh unto you. God is speaking to you, Sister Nelson. God is speaking to you, Brother Greg. God is speaking to you, too. Are you trying to walk away? But God trying to call you back. Read. Oh, house of Israel. Now, who's the house of Israel? The people on this sign right here. Right. Which includes you, 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 and me. All of us out here. God is speaking to all of us. What is he speaking when he says these words? Read. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord, uh -huh. learn not the way of the heathen. The Bible says, do not follow after the ways of the heathen. We're about to read about one of the big traditions of the heathens that God says, do not follow. Right. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. The signs of heaven are going into the sun, moon, and stars. What's your sign, bro? God said, don't follow that. You, right. you shouldn't even know. You don't, you, you ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with your people. The way the stars lined up when I was born ain't got a damn thing to do with my personality or the decisions that oh, I made. I mean, I you see that. what I'm saying? But but look, I brought that example out to show how ingrained yeah. these heathen oh, yeah, customs yeah. are in our people. Right. I know my sign. You probably know. your Everybody know their sign, but God said, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't follow after that horoscopes, astrology, none of that. What else doesn't the Lord want us to follow after? For the heathen are dismayed at them. Uh -huh. For the customs of the people are vain. When the scriptures talk about vain in many contexts, it's speaking about lies. Right. The heathen, God has given us truth. The heathens are giving us lies. That's why God does not want us to follow after their ways. Give me Proverbs 30 and 8. Hold that. Show them vain real quick. Hold that. Proverbs 30 and 8. Yes, sir. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. It's important that you understand what vain means because one of the Ten Commandments is don't take the Lord's name in what? In vain. And we thinking, oh, if I say, oh my God, that's a sin. Nah, that's not what it's talking about when it says don't take his name in vain. I want y'all to understand that as well. All right. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remove far from me vanity. What? Vanity. What's the root word of vanity? Vain. Remove far from me what? Vanity uh -huh. and lies. Lies. Vain is the same thing as lying. Being vain, according to the scriptures, taking the Lord's name in vain is taking these words out of the book and converting and turning them into lies. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. I'm going to give you an example in a minute. Read. You want to, I'm sorry, back uh, there. Yeah, we can drop, go back to uh, Proverbs 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 3. Jeremiah 10, I'm sorry. For the customs of the people are vain. So the customs of the people are what? Vain meaning what? Lies. They lying to you, telling you that you're supposed to be doing these things because God told you, don't do these things. Y'all follow me? Read. For one cutteth a tree. A what? A tree out of the forest. Somebody cuts a tree out of the forest. Read. What do the, they do with it? The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So they use an axe, they cut the tree out of the forest. What do they do with it? They deck it. They what? They deck it. Now we don't call it decking. We call it what? Decorating. You see that? You see how uh, crafty 
Remember the scripture says they've taken crafty counsel. So they're crafty with it. They don't say, let's, uh, let's, matter, they still got a song that still uh, reveals the evil in it. What is it? Deck the halls with, you see that? They still using the same word that the Bible uses. So the Bible is telling you, do not take this tree, do not cut it out of the forest, do not deck or decorate it with what? They deck it with silver and with gold. Uh -huh. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So they use some sort of device to make sure that it was able to stand up still on its own. We don't use hammers and nails anymore, we use what? It's green, it's got screws on the bottom, you pour a little water on the bottom of it. What's it called? A tree stand. <coughs> We're reading about the evil customs of Christmas right here in the Bible. That's right. And God said, don't follow after these ways. So this is the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, right? So we fast forward to the New Testament when Christ came. Were these customs already in place? Yeah, this is from the time of Babylon. This is a thousand years before Christ was born. The Greeks and the Romans were following these same customs. They called it Saturnalia. Right. And uh, it was another one that they called it as well. Yeah, the winter solstice, Sol Day Invictus, the unconquerable day of the sun. And Saturnalia. And they sang Christmas, they sang carols and gave gifts and all of that. They put all these pagan customs together and called it Christmas. Right. And now God's chosen people have taken these false, vain lies and adopted them as their own customs. God told you you was never supposed to celebrate Christmas from the beginning. That's right. These are the ways that we have to repent from. So when I ask you, when you ask um, why there's so many religions out there, because they've taken crafty counsel to keep our people as far from God as possible. Um, who got that for me in, in Judah? You know that one in Judah? If they say, if they yet sin? Five uh, twenty. Judah chapter five verse twenty. This is the part of the crafty counsel that the people understand. They must keep our people in sin so that God won't deal with them anymore. God will not save us as long as we're still in the midst of our sins. And there's nobody that needs saving more than we do. Who's at the bottom of this society? Who's the last hire? Who's the first fire? Who gets the knee on the neck? Our people, we need saving. But our savior will not come deliver us out of this place until a special number of men repent along with their women and children. Read that, bring that. The book of Judith, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and, we'll, uh, and we shall overcome them. So the, the other nations that we just read about in Psalms, that took crafty counsel against us, they understood that if there's sin in our people, God would not save our people. Right. Read up a couple of verses. Thank verse, you for shopping oh, at your local Walmart. Yeah. Verse 19. But now are they returned to their God. And are uh, hold, hold on, hold on. Start at verse uh, 16. Verse 16. And they cast, uh, I'm sorry, and they cast forth before them the Canaanite and the Parasite and the Jebusite and the Scythite and all the Gergesites and they dwell in the country many days. And whilst they sin not before their God, they prospered because that God, I mean, the God that hated iniquity was with them. So you can read this whole chapter and you'll find out the things that God did for the Israelites from the time he delivered them from Egypt all the way until they came into the promised land. And what we just read about was certain nations, God cast them and he moved them out of the way because we did not have sin amongst us. Because the God that hated sin, the God that hated iniquity, is our God. That's right, right. So imagine if our God hates sin, right? But we're in the midst of sin, what's gonna happen to us? Is God gonna be with us or against us? Against us. And what we experience here in America is the result of God being against That's us. That's right. right. That's why we got baby mothers in our community. That's why we got baby fathers in our community. That's why we're confused in many different religions. That's why our brothers are gay, our sisters are gay. Uh, that's why uh, um, uh, That's why we, we got Planned Parenthood. That's why we got all forms. Hey, bro, that, it's, it's going to lock up once you come past Walmart, bro. <laughs> all right? Because the God that hates iniquity is our God. And we're in the midst of iniquity. That's why it's important that we repent from our sins. Read. 
verse 18, but when they departed from the way which he appointed them, uh -huh. they were destroyed in many battles very sore. You see that? When we depart from the ways of our God, that's when we get destroyed. Right. If we're living according to God's laws, we're celebrating the Passover and not celebrating Easter. Easter's right around the corner. Don't put no eggs out for the children. That's right. Don't put on your best three-piece suit and go to church. You're not supposed to be a part of that at all. You're supposed to be celebrating the Passover, which is coming up in about a week and a half, two weeks. That's what you're supposed to be celebrating. Read. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captive. Led what? Captive. You see that? When we departed from God's commandments, we were led captives. And how did we get here to America? Captives. We were slaves, brought here on slave ship. Yeah, bro. Bro, you can take pictures, you can go live, you can take a video, you can do everything, bro. We need as many people to receive this information as possible. We need all of our brothers and sisters to, to make the mass exodus out of the Christian church and return back to God as an Israelite, keeping God's commandments. That's right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.